I don't think that there is any one like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. All the world is waiting for you. I had something of a reputation uh, as a master of camp in Hollywood. I had, when I was still a kid at ABC in the program department, come up with the idea of putting a comic strip on television. I was having lunch one day with Jerry Leiter, who ran Warner Brothers Television, and he said, you know, I've always loved Wonder Woman. And I said, Jerry, so have I. What can we do about her? And he said, well, we'd like to develop the show with you uh, and the right people involved and get it on the air. ABC is interested, are you interested? I leapt at it. Most superhero characters are male, and this was even more true when uh, Wonder Woman got started in 1941, which just shortly after Superman and Batman had been introduced. After Superman first came out, there was a plethora of heroes. That's when Charles Moulton came up with Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman was created by a man named William Moulton Marston. He was best known as a psychologist for his contributions to, to inventing the lie detector. He got a job working for a magazine where he had a column every month. This led him to be involved with a company called All American Comics, which is now DC Comics. He proposed a female superhero, which had never been done before. And in doing it, he put in a lot of his ideas from other areas. He was interested in ancient culture, and he used Greek and also Roman mythology sort of mixed together. He based his character on the myth of the Amazon. According to him, they were all living on a magical island somewhere far away. And Wonder Woman was an Amazon who was sent to aid America during World War II. Here's a character where they have a chance to do it in sort of our modern day, but they decided let's gonna make it very true to the roots of the comic book, where this is a story that took this character from essentially a fantasy land lost to time and pulled that character into our real world when we were in a time of turmoil, which of course is, you know, the time of World War II when Wonder Woman first appeared in 1941. Moulton brought in some of his psychological theories about dominance and submission. There's a great deal of people being tied up in the stories. Wonder Woman had a magic lasso which she could use to compel people to tell the truth, and this was obviously a reference to the lie detector that he'd invented years earlier. Now tell me about Peter Knight. I have nothing. He is working for us. Everyone wanted the Wonder Woman, the ideal Wonder Woman, to have a certain resemblance, obviously, to the cartoon character. That we needed a large woman, a statuesque woman, a buxom woman, and an angelic face. And beyond all that, we needed someone that could play it, could act and sustain a television movie and a series, hopefully, that would run for a long time. I had been going on a lot of interviews for any part that was out there, along with all of the 70s stars from Kate Jackson and Jacqueline Smith and Lindsay Wagner. We all ended up on this Farrah Fawcett, all in the same couple of little itty bitty parts that were out there for women at the time. There was this search on for Wonder Woman, and I had done a screen test for uh, Larry Gordon, Lawrence Gordon, uh, on a, another movie that was never made. Douglas Kramer saw that film. When I walked in, I did didn't have to do those horrible cold readings. We we're just going to go ahead and test you. Oh, oh my God! You know, so that was pretty thrilling. And uh, immediately went on a diet. And, you know, the, the million worrying about your waistline and your hips and everything else. And I went and bought everything I could buy on Wonder Woman that was out there and discussed it with some actor friends and how I wanted to pursue it, how I wanted to play it. And I did the screen test with Lyle Wagner. It seemed like it was years before I got the call, but it was probably only a couple of weeks and, um, and I was cast.